Dragon Ball Super episode 128. This was a pretty damn good episode. I liked it quite a bit. Uh, it could have been a lot better, though. And it's mainly, it's not because of production, you know, it's not because of animation or music or anything like that. I mean, yeah, directing could have maybe been a bit stronger, but no, it's honestly the writing in this episode. And it's not because it's badly written, it's just repetitive. Like this Vegeta promise to Kaba, promise to Bulma that he'll keep her. Like, I get it, that's Vegeta's motivation right now, but they just keep milking it. Like every time Vegeta has a speech against Jiren, or any time that he thinks about his motivation, it's always Kaba, Bulma, his family, and all they did in this episode was drag it out even more and milk it for emotion. And yeah, it was well directed, it had good music, it was nice to see footage from episode two. Uh, you know, that pointless episode, because Super started on filler, but now they're using that episode to give Vegeta an emotional moment, and I'm sure Vegeta fans love it, and I'm sure they're eating it up, so... Yeah, did, did Super start pointless again? Hmm, yeah, but anyways. Um, yeah, uh, it was just... We've seen the Cobb of Promise. We've seen the family, you know, he wants to save, wants to protect Bulma, he wants to protect Trunks and his daughter and everything, like, uh, bra. It just... I don't know, like, it's just repetitive. Like, they've really been jerking Vegeta off a lot lately with 122, which was fine, 122 was fine, then you give him a new form, kinda out of nowhere, basically exactly out of nowhere, uh, out of his ass is more like it, um, that was kinda bullshit, then he beats Toppo, which is fine, but it's like, he got, he's got a new form, he has this other episode with Jiren, then even after he beats Toppo and he does that big explosion and he's supposed to be out of power, he continues to fight in the next episode. And now, finally, there's this episode where half of it is spent with Vegeta having more Kaba flashbacks, more Bulma flashbacks to stuff that we've already seen is his motivation. It just feels repetitive. And I know I'm really shitting on this episode. I do not think it's a bad episode. I thought the flashbacks were effective for what they were trying to convey. I thought the storyboarding of the episode was quite good. Animation, I thought, was nice. A lot of the hand-to-hand -hand stuff, I felt, wasn't stiff. It had a lot of movement to it. When characters would get punched, they would sort of, they would reel back from the punch in a really cool way. Uh, lots of shot, a lot of shots of feet, you know, sliding into the dirt, which I really like that kind of stuff. Um, it was cool. It, you know, it was well storyboarded. I thought it was reasonably well animated. It got a little repetitive towards the end with Goku. Getting punched by Jiren, they use the same uh, loop over and over, but as a whole, I thought it was pretty good. I like that Vegeta gives a bit of his energy to Goku. I like the music. You know, Vegeta, he gets knocked down. Uh, he's got the black eyes. He stands up. The music's really cool. I think it's that, like, slowed down instrumental of uh, Limit Break X Survivor. Really cool. Uh, you know, it's got a lot going for it. It really does. I enjoyed the episode quite a bit. I just think the Vegeta stuff is repetitive. And it holds the episode back from being, like, really, really great and really, really, like, damn, this is an emotional moment for Vegeta. Because, yeah, it is an emotional moment for Vegeta, except we've already seen it. You know, he's already had, like, just less detailed flashbacks, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I don't know. That's just my opinion on it. But, I mean, you guys might feel differently. I know if, and if you feel differently and you thought this was really impactful and everything, that's totally fine. I totally get why you would. For me... It just feels a little repetitive, feels like a little bit too much Vegeta, all bunched together at the end of this arc, and then Goku steps in. So, gives energy to Goku, Goku rises up, really cool, we get some more action between him and Jiren, again, animation is good, nothing great, but it looks nice, and then Ultra Instinct comes back. That's, that's the big seller at the end of this episode, is the return of Ultra Instinct, and that, oh... That gut punch, you see it in the thumbnail, it had to be the thumbnail, it's kind of a spoiler for the episode to show that he gets Alter Instinct, but I, I had to, like that, that angle, and then Jiren's face right afterwards, we have never seen Jiren get rocked that hard, that was so satisfying to see, and of course Alter Instinct, the aura comes in full, everyone's happy to see it, and that's where the episode ends, and then going into next week's preview, that episode looks fucking... Oh, I'm ready for... I am so ready. I can't believe we have to wait, because it's not going to be next week. For those of you guys who don't know, it's going to be the week after next week, which really sucks, but uh, there's a break, so, you know. But, hey, that helps with production, and that episode looks so good. I mean, I don't think this break will help with this next episode in particular. Maybe with episode, like, 131 or 130, maybe, but... Yeah, that was... Yes, please. That episode, like, right now, that episode looks so fun. Uh, Bailey's based on, like, the 30-second preview, but it looks really cool. 
So yeah, I didn't really talk about the technical side of things because I actually had a lot to say about the story contents in this episode. Uh, again, I shit on it pretty hard in the beginning, but I do think it's a good episode for Vegeta. For me, it's just a little repetitive. Love the ending with Goku. Love seeing Goku try to fight him. Love seeing Vegeta try to fight him. Music point, music cues were on point, which I guess ties in with directing. Really like the storyboarding of the episode, too. That shot where Goku fires a blast, Jiren blocks it, and it blows up the rock behind him, and then it cuts to Goku on the ground. I love the angles there. Really, really solid. So you have some pretty good directing, pretty good storyboarding, in my opinion. Uh, music, like I said, was great. I love the music cues. Pacing was solid. Uh, I think it felt a little slow towards the end with a lot of, like, staring at each other with Ultra Instinct, but I get it. You want to build it up for the next episode, and I was hoping to see a little bit more of it. So that's not really a pacing issue. It's sort of a me issue, but, uh, other than that, no, it was just a really, uh, really well put together, really solid episode. In terms of supervisors, well, I know the chief supervisor was definitely Miyako Suji. She was doing a really good job, and then I think Miyuki Yokoyama, I think I saw her in there on, uh, Second Key Animation. I love her art style for the series. It's on model, but there's just something about the way she draws it. I, I think a perfect example would be Goku when he stands up after Vegeta gets eliminated and he turns Super Saiyan Blue. I believe that's Miyuki Yokoyama. I could be wrong, but I really, I love her art on Goku. It looks so good. Another scene with her corrections would be uh, Goku and Krillin staring each other down right before they spar with each other in episode 84. I love the way she draws Goku, but... Uh, yeah, so that was really cool. I'm not sure who supervised this episode. I want to say, I want to say Koji Nashizawa might have been on this one. I feel like I saw a little bit of him, some a little bit of indented cheek shading, and uh, some of his uh, the way he does faces. And I know actually, I know the other supervisor was uh, Osamu Ishikawa, who actually isn't so good at drawing Vegeta, but this episode looked really polished. Uh, I believe I'm pretty sure Tadayoshi Yamamoto has shown up to uh, tidy things up in these last few episodes. He is the overall director of animation for the series and the character designer, so it would make sense for him to show up. But yeah, I really like the character art in this episode. Yamamoto is not one of my favorite artists in terms of drawing Dragon Ball, but he has gotten better. Like, his promo art kind of sucks. His character designs are better. His actual supervision and corrections have gotten better. So yeah, I thought, you know, I thought it looked pretty good. In terms of actual key animators, though, I don't know. Maybe Chu, Chu Young Su. I, I can't pronounce it. It's a Chinese name. I can't pronounce it. Um... He's done a lot of cool stuff, though. He did Vegeta's Final Flash in 122. He's a really good animator. I think I saw him maybe a bit, a little bit of his smoke. Possibly. I'm not too good at calling smoke unless it's really distinct, like Sheeta or Tate. But really, with Tate, the character art gives it away before the smoke does. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was a really good episode. Again, I want to push that because I did shit on it a lot in the beginning with how repetitive the Vegeta stuff is. But I still enjoyed it quite a bit. I still think it was a good episode. It was a good send-off for Vegeta. It had a lot of really nice moments, but uh, I feel like if they hadn't pushed the Vegeta, Kaba, you know, the the Promise and the Bulma and the, the Bra and the Trunks and all that, if they hadn't pushed that stuff already like three or four times, at least two or three times for sure, if I'm not exaggerating, if they hadn't pushed that so much, I feel like this episode would have been uh, even better. You know, it would have been even more emotional. But as it stands, it's still a really good episode of Dragon Ball Super. I am beyond ready for the next episode, even though it's not coming next week, which really sucks, but the week after that, so ready for that episode. But um, I kind of want to talk about Mastered Ultra Instinct, and if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I'm not going to get into it because this video is probably long enough, but uh, I might do a separate video on Mastered Ultra Instinct, so look forward to that, I guess. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then it'll be a surprise. But uh, what did you guys think of this episode of Dragon Ball Super? Go ahead and give me your feedback in the comment section below. Give this video a thumbs up and uh, share it on social media. Both those would help me out a lot. Subscribe if you haven't already or if you like what you've seen here. Click that little bell to get notifications when my videos go up. I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.